How do you have Black Slimes? I think it's time to play a little. Seven Days to Die. Alright, so here we are at my base. Um, I decided to go with cooking. Uh, I don't remember if I did that at the end of the episode or not, but I decided that um, cooking was more important than a vehicle at this given moment. Then I need two levels to get a vehicle. Uh, but that should should help being able to make food. I mean, I've got a ton of... Uh, ooh, there's a bit of lag there as I came down the ladder. I got food. Um, I just couldn't turn it into anything but, like, charred meat or something. Ooh, man, this is a long way out here for... Iron just be laying on the ground. So we're going to dive back into some buildings tonight and uh, take a gander. Um, so we played D&D, &D, <laughs> and uh, I, don't, I see a deer. I see it. Oh, you know what, though? You know what? You know what? I took out my bow and my arrows. That wasn't smart. Should have left those in. Uh, I think I've looted this place. So we want a new house. Let's go for this trailer over here. Let's see what's in this weird trailer. Uh, so uh, we uh, we had finished. Um, We'd finished uh, the previous level and uh, of our dungeon that we're descending into. Bad doggy. Bad doggy. Doggy killed me. Oof, I didn't even get anywhere. Ugh, I need some better weapons, man. And so, uh, we had, um, we got down and, and, uh, had just, I mean, we basically entered the new floor and stopped the game. Uh, oh no. You know where our bed's at? Next to that school that's a million miles away from my house that I couldn't kill that football player at. Oh, dang it. I never remember to reset my bed, I tell ya. So, uh, at least I'm not over overweighted this time, so it shouldn't take me a million years to get home. So, um, we start off, and he starts describing things, and, and uh, one of the things that he does is, like... We're not allowed to, I mean, we're allowed to, but because he almost never stops talking, we don't get a chance to, like, say what we want to do in places, and so instead what happens is he, he tells us things that we shouldn't know, and then tells us to make rolls on the things that we shouldn't know about. And, uh, uh, and so like, we're, we're just starting out on this floor and we're looking around. We got a map. We can see, um, we can see, you know, on the map that there's a few tunnels. And so, He's like, so where do you want to go? And so then I'm trying to discuss it with the other players. I'm like, so should we, you know, stick to our usual follow the wall thing? Or should we? And he's like, well, you've got like three options to go here. You, you don't want to go back to the place you came from, but you can go over here and you can go over here and you can go over here. Like, okay. Like, so you want to go east or west or, you know, how do we, how do we want... 
Well, I mean, you can see that there's like one big open tunnel here, and you can see that there's. Yeah, dude. Can we? Can I discuss it with the other guy? On what we're gonna do? Can Can we do that? Are we allowed to have a moment? And uh, and so then he says, um, "How about how about when you roll perception then?" And so uh, the other guy rolls perception. And he's like, "That's good enough." Uh, so you hear you hear some muttering coming from the other room, um, and he points at what direction it's coming from. We didn't ask to roll perception. We didn't ask to listen. Uh, he was just like, you, "Maybe you'd better listen. Roll perception." Uh, and uh, so, so then he's like, uh, "You hear two people talking to each other," and uh, I'm like, "Well, what are they saying?" And he's like, well, does anybody here speak orc? Now, my character is an orc. Uh, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I speak orc. Oh, right. Well, you know. Uh, I'm like, no, I don't know. You obviously have forgotten anything about our characters at this point. And, um, and so then... Uh, uh, we get going and we don't go that way. We go another way and we talk to this guy and, um, we ask him a few questions and, um, he doesn't know anything because no one ever knows anything ever about anything. And, uh, and then also, uh, we talked to this woman who told us, uh, some of the fungi to look out for. And somehow that turned into every time he gave a description, he would give us the like scientific name practically of the fungus and every piece of its uh, of its lore, you know, like what it does, what all that stuff, and or like what it can be turned into, how you cook it, you know. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it was more of a general like. Hey, watch out for this kind, you know, that kind you can eat, basically. And, uh, and no, no, every time we ran into a new mushroom, uh, or fungus, we had to get the full, every piece of information from the book on it. And, uh, so, <clears throat> so, ooh, that was weird. I don't know why my, my voice just did that. So then um, we get going in there and uh, we're looking around. We don't see anything. And I'm like, we should probably be watching for traps and stuff. And so um, we didn't see anything. And then he says that we got surprised because we're always surprised. Always. Every fight is a surprise. And, uh, we had two fights last night. Both of them were surprise. Um, and so, uh, so surprise, surprise is a thing that can happen, but surprise is a thing that happens if you're not looking for it. And when I go, do I see anything on the ceiling? Because we have dealt with, uh, Gricks multiple times. And they drop from the ceiling sometimes, and so I thought maybe there'd be some gricks because we could, we could see, we could see uh, broken, broken armor and stuff like that on the ground, and so I was right to assume that something was on the ceiling, and so then he has me roll perception. Now I will grant you that um, that. Uh, I didn't roll high enough necessarily to see them. I don't know what their hiding level was, um, which may be a roll. I don't know, but uh, we immediately go into surprise round after I ask if I can see anything on the ceiling. Uh, and so for him, a surprise round means nobody gets a turn except the monsters, which is not how it's supposed to go in the book. Uh, have I searched this place? I feel like I must have. Jeez. 
<laughs> you know what? There's monsters in there, so maybe I haven't. It's right next to my base, though. I feel like I went in up there, right? I definitely have searched this place. And so, um... It was... Uh, every fight's gotta be super annoying, of course. And so... Uh, the creatures are 20... 25 feet off the floor, always, because nothing can be in melee range. Um, ever. And, uh, and so then, um... Like I said, if it can go invisible, it is. If it can hide, it has. Uh, if it can fly, it's as far away from us as it can be and still hit us. Uh, always. If it can run, it runs away. You know. Maybe I haven't been here. Man, this is... I thought I had been in this place, but... Uh, do extra... Yeah, I don't really do sneak attack. The Fireman's Almanac. What is this one says? Authorized personal only? An untold truth. The aftermath. Ta time matters. Scarlet journals. Inquisitive killer. And, um, man, there's a lot of paper. So, oh, look, I can make handlebars. I just need the chassis recipe. I shouldn't have done up that. No, see, I have searched these. Why didn't I search those? Weird. Like, I just opted not to... Look, I didn't search these. What the heck? Why did I search... Um, maybe my invent... Well, why would my inventory be full from books? Because I'm going to use the books. Maybe I died and didn't come back in here. That must be what happened. So, um... Yeah, I basically got yanked up into the air. And then, because he has no concept of distance of any kind... Uh, doorknobs. Okay. Um, he's like, oh, well, you know, he yanks you. It, it's, it says that the creature yanks you 25 feet toward itself. So somehow, instead of pulling everybody toward it like it's supposed to, it just lifts them up in the air... And then that way they can't they can't do their regular attacks and they can't move to get any closer because they're being held in the air. You know, you know how that works, right? Twenty five feet the creature pulls its victim twenty five feet toward itself to eat because it's a monster. Uh it's a it was a roper. We were fighting ropers. And uh if you know what a roper is, it's, it's basically, um, uh, I don't think I, no, I don't have any leg armor on. Huh. Well, I do now. And, uh, so, uh, it was a super annoying fight. And then I couldn't roll high enough last night to get over its armor. And... And, uh, and then... A roper, uh, I don't use a spear, but I'll go ahead and learn a skill. A roper has a lot of hit points for us. Like, I think my guy's got like 75-ish hit points. So each roper has over 90. Um, and so that's, that's a lot. And, um, so... Oh, right, because it's coordinate. 
And so the um, attacking the Roper and, you know, missing, 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 missing. And uh, and so then uh, I got in like two good hits, I think. And then um, the other guy, uh, they had finished, killed the other Roper. And so then the other guy had hit it a couple of times for decent amounts of damage. And, um, and I'm like, sheesh, I've done so much damage to this thing at this point between, between four of us hitting it. How is it still alive? Because the other one went down in just a couple of hits. And, uh, because my DM does not write down hit points for his bad guys, he just feels when they're going to die. And, um, which is super annoying. Everything is always like, oh, it's good. You just missed it. It's got two more hit points. It's always got two more hit points. Uh, my guy will finish it off, though. Every time. My guy will finish it off. I'm going to finish this creature off. I've moved all the way across the map from the creature I was fighting because this one's almost dead. So I'm going to finish this off for you. Um, but yeah, so we got through those and then... Uh, we, uh, I don't want spirit. Do you, do you see game? I'm using knuckles. Give me some knuckle books. And, um, so we get in to this other part and, uh, we're, you know, searching for traps. I'm not searching for traps. Our thief is searching for traps because that's, that's what he does. That's what he's kitted out to do. I am kitted out to hit things with my big sword or to talk our way out of things. We're never allowed to talk our way out of things. Ha ha ha, that's funny. Uh, and um, so uh, so our DM does this thing where he won't tell us what's in a room until we enter it. And so we'd already said we wanted to search for traps along the way. And then he tells us to put our guys in the next room. And because once again, no concept of distance. So in the dark, you can see like 60 feet or more uh, with our characters because they have dark vision. And, um, and somehow we can't ever see the bad guys until we're in the same room as they are. And, uh, I mean, like, like if there were bad guys in that room, he will not tell us that they're there until we're like here. Kind of like that. Uh, and, uh, and I find that super reading the schematic will teach you how to make this item tempered blade. Cool. The great heist. What? I've never seen jewelry in this game. There's jewelry in this game? Fireman's Almanac. And, um, so... He's like, well, technically you guys have already stepped in this spot and tripped it. And I'm like, well, you told us to move here. So uh, we said we wanted, oop, not recipes. I clicked on the wrong thing. We said we wanted to search for traps when we were in the hallway. And you told us just to go ahead and put our guys in the room. So we did. Yeah, yeah, I know. So I'm, I'm not going to spring that one. But you are going to have to roll to see if, uh, if the, uh, you know, the other guy manages to disarm it. Otherwise, you guys are going to take damage from springing the trap. So, we managed to disarm the trap. And, uh, and then there's another one in the room as well. Um, and, uh, it's spider webbing. And it's like, oh, well, this is obviously spiders so we should stealth and uh and so we we stealth right 
and we all roll really good on our stealth checks. And so we managed to sneak up on the spiders. Um, but the spiders weren't the only thing in the room, and we weren't allowed to sneak up on the other thing in the room. And so then we start our combat with spiders. He tells us that we got the surprise on the spiders. And so we take our turns, and then the spiders go to take their turn, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are they going? And he's like, well, it's their turn. I'm like, no, 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 no. You said we surprise them. So uh, when we get surprised, we only get to stand there. So they only get to stand there. Oh, right, 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 right. And then and then he does this thing that I absolutely hate. Uh, he's always moving things after you've entered the room. And he never puts them back when you call him on it in the same spot. And so he moves all of the creatures farther away from us than they were. Because uh, it changes things. Because you can only move so much on your turn. And positioning matters. Like a thief can only get a sneak attack if they have advantage. Or if an ally is within five feet of the creature being distracting to it. And... Um, uh, and so when he moves the, the guys, he moves them away from where they were at. So now they're not next to the thief. So he can't get sneak attack with my guy also standing there. And I hate it. I hate when he does that. And he does it all the time. He does it to our guys. We'll move into the room and then he'll move our guys to where he wants them. Uh, he'll reposition the guy, like... Like he'll put, he'll reveal the guys, the bad guys that we're about to fight, and then I'll, and then like my bard who has AOE spell, will get, uh, really good. Uh, initiative, so turn order. And so he'll go before the bad guys, and I'll be like, oh, you know what? I didn't mean to put these guys down here. And then he'll start rearranging them so they're not near each other, so I can't hit them with my AOE spell. Uh, it happens a lot. And so it's super annoying. And then, um, uh, so we get into combat and we're fighting and we're killing the spiders because their spiders are not powerful at this level. They are, we are well above spiders, but that's not all that's in the room. And the other thing in the room didn't roll. Uh, against our stealth for sure because we rolled really well um, but we didn't see them because they were hidden in the shadows and uh, and so two two uh, oh man like I want to make this I can't make this I will never make this jump I'm too overweighted um do Band-Aids give you health? No. Here, we'll use, we'll use this. I don't know why this is open like this, but I felt like I wanted to try to... I don't know why this is better than just coming in from down below, but... There's some nice boxes to loot down here. I wish I had a ranged weapon. I wasn't aimed at that one. Dang it. That seemed awful cheaty, don't you think? Aimed at the one on the left. Somehow hit the one on the right. Oh no, I forgot to reset my bed again. And it's horde night. This is going to be awful. So, um... I don't know if I'll make it home before horde. So, uh, so yeah, we, we start fighting all the... You know, I'm just going to do that. And then that way 
can't happen again. Uh, stamina regen. And uh, yeah, so it was uh, it was definitely annoying fighting that stuff. And um, I just I don't understand why why. Uh, the other thing was, uh, uh, so I, I've talked about it before, but it's, um, the, the dungeon has things in it that's supposed to happen if you clear a floor, then the next time you come back, there's other things there. And, uh, and so I don't, I don't really understand how these adventures are supposed to work half the time. And this one especially, because... Our DM keeps telling us that we're supposed to go up a level every floor or a level every two floors, but we only get XP if we kill things. And so if you don't clear the floor, you don't get the ex enough XP to level up and he won't let us go to the next floor. Uh, he's done it before. Um, when we did Princes of the Apocalypse, um, he did this thing where the doors were sealed and he wouldn't let us go deeper into the dungeons because we weren't the appropriate level in his opinion. And um, so it's it gets to be super annoying to me. And uh, so he's doing that on this one too. And But one of the weird things in this adventure, which is not him, it's the, it's the adventure, is that there's these gateways that take you between floors, but they don't mean anything. They're the dumbest addition to the game I think I've ever seen. Like, they they seem like they could be cool. But they don't, as far as I know, they don't take you to other places. They take you to other floors of the dungeon. But we can't use them until we're the appropriate level. And you always so far in four levels of dungeon you always run into them when you're a lower level than they are and so uh like we're level eight we just turned level eight we have to complete the floor we're on and the next floor he says to get to level nine so, what level is the gate we found last night? Level 9. It requires level 9 to open. Uh, and so... I hate them. It's... Uh, I hate that stuff. It's, it's not even like... Like, I don't understand why there are these gateways. Because they're not... They're not, like, along the main path between floors. This one was all the way off to the side in a cave with spiders. Uh, so why is the gateway from floor four to floor two, apparently, in a side cavern that you have to walk, like, five, ten minutes from the main place to get to? Um... That it doesn't make any sense. I, I I mean, sure, it's the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, but not all of this stuff was made by him. Uh, there are dwarven ruins all over the place with some of these gateways in them. So somebody has put these gateways in, but they're not useful. And then uh, I'm like, I don't understand the point of these. Like, like why do we keep running these things and then we can never use them? And our DM is like... Well, you see, uh, you'll you'll get to the appropriate level, and then you'll be able to use them. And I'm like, okay. He's like, in fact, I think the next one you find will be a level that you can use. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, and it'll take you back to level two. And I'm like, and what good does that do us? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, does it lead us to someplace new? Well, no. So it just takes us back to someplace we've already been. Yeah then why do we need it? Well, because it's a faster way to get back to level two. I'm like, faster than me saying we'd travel through the tunnels to get back to level two? He's like, well, I mean, yeah, exactly. In this version of the game, they're pointless. I don't understand why you got them locked 
don't understand it. Because you don't run the, the levels like they're living. That Nothing comes back into the areas we've killed. Uh, the only time anything's ever repeatedly attacked us is the one time we wanted to use that river. Uh, so what's the point? What's the point? Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, uh, so that was it. That was our whole night. We fought, we fought one group of ropers that surprised us, and then we fought a group of spiders, and then some dry, or not dry, driders surprised us. I think I said dryad. I meant drider. A drider is a half elf, half spider monster. Uh, it's, it's actually a drow which is a dark elf. So it's half drow, half dr half spider, a drider. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I wanted to, you know, see if I make it all the way home here before I stop the video. Um, yeah, I'm pretty irritated by the mail today. Uh, so twice now, uh, we get a lot of boxes here, um, and during the summer, it doesn't rain that much, uh, so it's not that big a deal, but we're moving into fall, which is our wet season, and so it rains, you know, every couple of days, it seems like now, and uh, I've lived here for close to 10 years in this house, and... Um, I don't understand why suddenly the mail is no longer placing our packages in our garage. I could understand if they were putting them someplace that was not as far for them to go to put the packages. Uh, and that's why they're being left out in the rain. But they're literally leaning them against the door that they used to open to put the packages inside the garage. And so I get uh, loot crates. Uh, I think I talked a little bit about my loot crate box got ruined. Um, the shirt inside was wet from the rain having soaked through the box. Uh, luckily, nothing else got too wet. Um, but then today I got a new vacuum and I got a... Um, cover for my Kindle and uh, both of them are were wet like the cardboard on top of the I mean it's dry now but it had water standing on it and just tore apart in my hand like it was just a wet mess um, and I don't understand I don't understand why that's okay uh, like they knew it was raining they dropped it off in the rain you took it to the door. If you didn't take it to the door, I could understand, but you took it to the door. Just open it up, lean it inside. That way it doesn't get wet. In fact, in fact, you could see on the ground that if you put it right up against the house, then it was dry there. But that's not where they left it. They left it six inches into the rain, uh, six inches in the dry, right? And uh, next to the door that leads into the garage. Yep. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and call it here. I made it home. I got a bunch of stuff I need to sort through. Um, did not get bicycle stuff again. Uh, so, that's a shame. Anyways, be better than the small things. Lean to the light. And I will talk to you later.